Sunset had fallen on the countryside, and the warmth of the day was fading with each passing moment. Vespers of an autumn breeze whispered through the fields, setting the amber stalks of corn into a somber dance. Yet with each swaying step, two interlopers were revealed, standing stark and defiant against the motion of their surroundings. In seeking their still forms, in seeking their still forms, one might almost believe that they were never breathed nor blinked. Such was certainly the calm belief, perhaps shared even by the figures themselves, which made it all the two more surprising when one of them spoke. My arms hurt, Frank. The second figure remained motionless, though a flicker of expression may have crossed its face. Frank, my arms hurt. Damn it, Jed. With a shuffling of cloth and straw, Frank turned to face his partner. When they sent you here, they said you was the best choice. You said you knew the rules. Now shut up before someone hears you. Silence returned to the field, broken only by the rustling of the currents through the corn. Even a nearby stream, which burbled happily in the hours of daylight, seemed to have hushed itself in preparation for the dusk. This night was an important one, and its tars was all but sacred. Oh, who's gonna hear us, Frank? It's not the point. What matters is if someone did, we ain't supposed to talk. Jed Considering this, though the contents of his head were hardly suited to higher reasoning, well so what? It's a stupid job anyway. Ain't nobody passed yet that hasn't laughed at us. Frank sighed, removed his hat and stretched his leathery skin. Look Jed, that may very well be. Fact is, it don't matter one bit. It's got to be done. You understand me? No. Good. You- wait, what the hell do you mean no? Ain't no one ever told you the story? The straw around Jed's neck made a rasping noise as he shook his head. Folks keep saying I'll learn it when I have the need. I've been starting to think they don't know it themselves. Oh, they know it alright. Frank cleared his throat and made a spitting motion at the ground, though his lips remained dry. They know it, sure as they know their own names. They know it. Sure as they know their own mamas. Just that, well, it ain't exactly pleasant talk. He sighed again, as much of the frustration of having to speak as from the thought of his next words. See, there was a time, so many years ago, when these fields were beset by a plague. Not a plague of illness, mind, no. This plague came as winged beasts from the sky, black as night they were with voices like something from a nightmare. Crows, whispered Jed. His eyes scanned what little of the horizon he could see beyond the cornfield. I've heard tell of them. Figured they were a children's tale. Frank shifted his weight, adjusting the rigid stick on which he rested his arms. That may be, but there's truth in their stories. Crows are real enough, even if one scarcely hears of them, in anything but a legend these days. Back when their terror was at hand, They'd descend on these fields and eat their fill, leaving precious little for the folk who toiled with the seed. It brought a hardship on the land, leaving everyone desperate. My arms still hurt, Frank. Frank rolled his eyes. We're talking, aren't we? Have a rest. Hell, sit down for all matters now. Thanks, Frank. Jed dropped from his post and crumpled to the ground, suddenly looking very much like a lifeless pile of rags. So, what happened? Though he opened his mouth to speak, Frank hesitated. On any other night, the words were just a story, but on this night, they might be something more. You keep a listen for anything amiss, alright? Jed nodded, and Frank resumed his tale. It was a dark time, to be sure. Dark enough that some reckoned they might employ a darkness of their own. He closed his eyes and recited the secret verse known only to those who stood watch in the field. Gathered they the walls of the green, left to dry by day, shaped into a sentinel, and clothing was the hay, set upon tormented fields against the demon's core. Given life by darkness, given life by darkness, the men of naught but straw gave to them the hollowed charge. Upon the darkest night paid the price for vigilance, when the absent was the light. When absent was the light, gathered they one of the young, for empty demon's core, 
overtaken by the darkness, the men of North Stroll. Strollmen? Whispered Jit. Strollmen like, like us, Frank. Frank's expression grew colder as he shook his head. Don't you be thinking that way. The strawmen was something. Something other than living, Jet. Scared the crows away, they did. But at a terrible cost. They were dead inside, see. Stayed where they were meant to. Like statues. Save for one night a year when they'd come alive and have a reaping. Only it weren't corn they took away, but a child. One child left outside the past sunset. Children are outside past sunset all the time, Frank. Not on this night, Frank hissed. He lowered his voice even further. On this night, the children wear masks. The straw men can't see those who hide their eyes, not unless they look at the straw men first. Jed fell silent, chastised. The sky had darkened considerably, with only the most tenacious rays of the dying light still piercing the walls of corn, somewhere in the distance. A woman's voice called out for her son. Hey Frank. What? I still don't get it, Frank. Don't get what? We're out here. Why we gotta stand here like this? Why folks laugh at us? I mean, we're straw men, right? In response, Frank launched a kick at his companion's leg. Ow! What are you gonna do that for? It was a straw man, Frank said. Do you reckon that would have hurt? Your flesh and blood, Jed. So how can you be a straw man? Well, I mean, it's pretend, ain't it? I fill my clothes with straw and play make-believe, right? Frank tapped a glove hand against the side of his hat. But here, he thumped his hand against his chest, making his stuffed shirt crackle. It's all real. That's what matters, Jed. He swung his arm wide, gesturing to the cornfields around him. You want to know why you're out here? It's so that fear don't come back. Even one child being taken keeps that terror festering, keeps folks in mourning. Might as well have the crows back. But if someone goes to stand watch, then the straw men don't come walking. They can go all rest easy. They can laugh at their fear and get on with their lives. Now, do you get it? I get it, Frank. Jed hurriedly replied. I'm here to stand watch. I get it. Good. Now back up on your post. We got a long night ahead. Jed retook his position and Frank readjusted his own. The wind had died with the sunlight, leaving the cornfields completely still. Hey Frank. Shut up. Sorry. Jed closed his mouth. Only, what happens to them, Frank? To the children? What children? You know, pushed Jed. The children that they take away. Frank turned to regard his companion. The poor boy was hardly out of his youth, with only the barest hint of stubble on his chin. Even in the darkness, an earnest innocence twinkled in his eyes. You sure you want to know, Jed? Jed turned to meet Frank's gaze. Yeah, Frank. I'm sure. As he had done before, Frank reached up to remove his hat, only this time, his entire head came away leaving a rigid cluster of yellow stemming from his shirt. They became straw men, Jed. They become straw men. Well guys, that was Scarecrows, a creepypasta by the Polish Knob. And this is probably one that's come around for Halloween, I'm guessing. Kinda interesting, actually. Plays on full of people with farmers or gardens and they have scarecrows and stuff. Kind of plays on that a bit, with them being animate, and then crows made them inanimate, but on Halloween, I'm guessing by the, the hints there of Halloween, they come alive and uh, take children. So, yeah. Anyway, that was Scarecrows. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. If you liked it, leave a like. If you dislike it, dislike it. Subscribe to this channel, and if you do, hit the bell to get notified. If you want, you can join my Discord, it's free, the link is do so in, in the description below. You can talk to me, many others, and all that, and to giveaways that I do from time to time as well. But, as always, thank you so much for watching.